Well, hi, everybody. I thought I'd celebrate our finalist status in the UK at the Brighton Rocks Film Festival by calling together a few of the earliest posts created for dollars and cents. So, for the rest of this month, permit me to provide you with a taste of 2019's pre-production ideas that led to our first private screening for producers on March 7th, 2020. We went into post-production for several months following that screening, and finally, onward to our festival submissions late last year. Again, regarding our most recent Laurel, I want to thank festival director James Rollins and his staff at Brighton Rocks for having provided us with the gift of our first public festival screening. We're so excited to announce that Dollars and Cents will have its premiere on Saturday, July 24th, live at Brighton's Rialto Theatre. Alas, I only wish I could be there in person to celebrate. Now, if you haven't seen Dollars and Cents, the festival will also be presenting it virtually, as so many of us are unable to make that transatlantic continental flight. I promise to post all information pertinent to that virtual screening within the next few days. But meanwhile, back to this week's repost and composer Philip Beavers discussing his ideas for the film's musical soundtrack. And by the way, a very special thank you to countertenor Daniel Moody for his beautiful contribution to our soundtrack. I hope you'll enjoy. Of course, the audio that we have for the film is not completely cleaned up, so those gaps of fuzzy sound and silence that you hear is the raw audio from the film itself going along with the score. One of the things I'm excited to continue on while making this score is bringing this melody, this new lullaby variation of Brahms' House Out for the Streams and bringing that more throughout the film to bring it up as a thematic point uh, sonically for the audience to hear and for us to know that you know the progression of the story is moving along maybe it'll go from different instruments to give it a different uh, tonal sound or a different kind of uh, reverb to it maybe to give it more gravitas of the situation or to more better represent the complexity going on between the two characters and their relationship and one of the things I want to make sure to do while bringing this piece back and comparing it with the Brahms is to show the different contextual tonality that they bring within themselves. Be well and stay engaged and bye bye for now. <laughs>